Hey there, um, this is the final reading from the Rise and Pray 31 Days of Prayers and Psalms um, booklet. I'm going to read day 28, 29, 30, and 31, and then we'll pause for a little bit, and then um, we're going to head out to the courthouse and wrap up on the square there. So wherever you may be, hopefully you can join us in prayer as well. And uh, we can believe God together one last time as we end the Rise and Pray day. All right? All right, so day 27. The scripture is Psalm 82, verse 8. Rise up, O God. Oops, I'm sorry. That was the other day. Day 28. <laughs> the one we haven't done yet. Um, Psalm 83, verse 18. Then they will learn that you alone are called the Lord, that you alone are the Most High, supreme over all the earth. Yes, Lord, you alone are the most high. End of scripture. Um, today we pray for believers to remain faithful to God and not be led astray by influences of immorality, idolatry, false teaching, and unrepentant sin, or those who engage in conjecture and can possibly lead to false accusations and divisiveness within the body of Christ. We pray for unity in the body of Christ all across the world, collectively reflecting your very character and will in the earth. Thank you, Lord. Help us to join together by the power of your Holy Spirit to be as you need us to be for such a time as this. Just like Esther, Father God, um, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that we are like Esther's and we are rising up, we're entering your throne boldly, Lord, and we are coming before you asking you to bring unity in the body of Christ. There's so much division in the body of the Christ, in the body of the Christ, in the body of Christ, um, via denominations, via via racial. Um, tensions within denominations. Lord, we just pray for unity. We pray for unity that begins in our uni um, our being united to the Lord, our um, being united to our spouse, our being united in our homes with our families, being united in a cohesive unit, um, being united in the community. I'm praying for all churches in this community right here to come together, to work together, to collaborate, to be one body, not multiple siloed bodies in and through this community, but to be one body who represent Christ to the lost in this community because there are lost in this community. So Spirit of God, Spirit of the living God who lives within us, compel us to be united, compel us to be a unified body for your glory in this time, for such a time as this. Okay, we're going to move on to day 29. Day 29, verse uh, Psalm 84, verse 10 through 11. A single day in your court is better than a thousand anywhere else. I would rather be a gatekeeper in the house of my God than live the good life in the home of the wicked. For the Lord God is our sun and our shield. He gives us grace and glory. The Lord will withhold no good thing from those who do what is right. End of scripture. This afternoon, or evening rather, we pray for believers to truly, truly be alive in Christ rather than simply having an appearance. Help us understand what this means and what it looks like. Then help us by your grace to be alive in you, to be alive in Christ. Like the psalmist today wanted his whole being, body and soul, to shout for joy, I ask that our entire being be alive in you, Lord Jesus. Where there may be places we've not allowed you to touch, please bless us with a measure of courage and a measure of faith to allow you to go there. Lord God, enough with people having a, an appearance of being alive in Christ. Because guess what? People can, people know. People know what's you and what's not you. People know when it's genuine and when it's not. And for those who put on a facade of being alive, inevitably, you, we can smell a stench sometimes. We can, we can smell the stench that is um, the flesh <laughs> and the way it likes to rear its head in a Christian's life sometime. So I'm praying for 
believers to truly, truly, truly to be alive in Christ and Christ to truly, truly be alive in them. And again, that requires the Holy Spirit. We've been speaking so much about the Holy Spirit today. The Holy Spirit in our lives is so important. That is why we're praying for a fresh outpouring. That is why we are praying for a spiritual awakening. That is why we are praying for the Holy Spirit to rush into this place like a mighty rich river of living water and to rise up and flood places that are not um, being a reflection of Christ everywhere. So again, Lord, I just pray tonight that we are truly alive in Christ and that we walk out of this place tonight and we go into the places in the, in the community and in the marketplace and people see something different about us. They see that person has been in the throne room of the living God. That person has the living God living in them. And remember, how do people recognize that we belong to the living God, the one true God? By the way we love. So Holy Spirit of God, help us to love and love well. Lead us uniquely in unique uh, encounters with people, our, our spouses and our children and um, other children's children and other people just uniquely cause us to speak what needs to be spoken. Something nobody else would have ever known had it not been for us hearing from God because they prayed to God. All right, moving on to day 30. The scripture is Psalm 85 verse 10 through 13 unfailing love and truth have met together righteousness and peace have kissed truth springs up from the earth and righteousness smiles down from heaven yes the lord pours down his blessings our land will yield its bountiful harvest righteousness goes as a herald before him preparing the way for his steps End of scripture. Lord, we are grateful for your unfailing love and faithfulness, truth, as some translations state, that they meet together. We also pray for believers to obey the Lord and continue to persevere. Persevere, like the church in Philadelphia in Revelation 3, which we're going to go to scripture here in a minute. I pray we are a body who stands firm and perseveres. Do it a thousand times. Just keep doing it. Just keep doing whatever the Lord has put on our heart to do. Whether that is to love a husband who has an addiction and it seems like he's never ever going to be delivered from it, you keep loving him. Whether it's because we have, um, whether the calling is to, to continue to be with our children who seem completely ungrateful sometimes, we keep loving them. We keep pouring into them. We keep going to places that is meaningful to them. It could be a calling to take care of somebody who has a, a physical impairment. Or it could be to keep going into a workplace where you're not appreciated at all. And you have no understanding of why you're there or what your purpose is. But God has you there for a season. Keep going a thousand times. Keep going because he moves mountains and he brings us to our feet. And he will cause us to rise up and he will cause us to stand. So I want to read real quick about the church in um, Philadelphia in the uh, book of Revelation chapter 3. So I'm going to thumb back there real quick. Revelations can be spooky for some people. Um, so, the message to the church in Philadelphia. This is the message for the one who is holy and true, the one who has the key of David. What he opens, no one can close. And what he closes, no one can open. So if the Lord has opened doors, if he's opening doors right now as we speak, nobody can close those doors, okay? So, um, if you just hopped on, we are in Revelations 3, uh, verse... 7 moving into verse 8 I know all things you do and I have opened a door for you that no one can close you have little strength yet you obeyed my word and did not deny me look I will force those who belong to Satan's synagogue those liars who say they're Jews but are not to come and bow down at your feet they will acknowledge that you are the ones I love because and I have this underlined this is red letter um, I have this underlined. I'll just show you so you know I'm telling the truth I'm speaking the truth beep, beep. Um, because you have obeyed my command to, to persevere, I will protect you from the great time of testing that will come upon the whole earth to test those who belong to this world. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take away your crown. All who are victorious will become pillars. So I'm praying that, and I'm, I'm, I'm reading that, rather, and it says, You have obeyed my command to persevere. So I just want to share, my, my daughters literally just walked in. They asked about this day, Who all came? Who all was here? And I was like, 
one person? And they're like, what? You know? And it was like, you can just tell, like, they're disappointed because they believe that if you put something into something, you invest yourself, that there should be this, this like, yielding of great measure, right? But this is not about great measure. This is about an act of obedience. This is, this is an act of obedience on my part because I've obeyed my command to persevere. And there has been so many points of resistance along this past couple of months, few, three or four, probably the whole year actually. So many things. And we have to persevere. And so that is what I wanted to share um, from day 30. We also pray for believers to obey the Lord and continue to persevere. Like the church in Philadelphia in Revelation 3. Why? Why is it important that we persevere? Because all who are victorious will become like pillars in the temple of God and they will never have to leave it. And I will write on them the name of my God and they will be citizens in the city of my God, the new Jerusalem that comes down from heaven. And I will also write on them my new name. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he's saying to the churches. We want to be Come victorious pillars for the Lord in his house. Okay, so that's bonus. <laughs> that's not that's not in the booklet. Um, that was not part of it. It was just the Holy Spirit compelled me to, to dig a little bit deeper into um, Revelations 3 and that part where he was speaking of the church in Philadelphia. Yeah, Philadelphia. Okay, so this is the last day, and then we'll take a little bit of a break, maybe. God's stirring a little something in my heart, so we, we might go to that, and then we'll go out to the courthouse before. Uh, so I'm just going to read this, and again, allow his spirit to lead me if he decides to go a little off the, the, the road here. Okay, so day 31. The scripture is Psalm 86, verse 11 and verse 15. Teach me your ways, O Lord, that I may live according to your truth. Grant me purity of heart, so that I may honor you. But you, O Lord, are a God of compassion and mercy, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. End of scripture. Yes, Lord, teach us your ways. Like David's psalm, we ask you for a pure and undivided heart. David loved the Lord so much. He loved the Lord. He was a man after God's own heart. And we know that the greatest command is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all, all, your, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. And David loved him. Um, we ask as we set our attention and affections toward you in all aspects of our lives, being wholly devoted to you. Make us wholly devoted to you, Lord. Today we pray believers no longer become or no longer be, God forbid they become after this, <laughs> lukewarm. For the Lord and to see his purification and covering again. A revival in the heart and in the mind caused many around the world to be all in when living for the Lord. All in. Start first with our own hearts, expanding and growing to all parts of the earth. Lord, thank you for placing specific prayers on our hearts the past um, several days. Thank you for being filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion. The Lord is full of mercy. He's slow to get angry, and he's filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. I personally believe that today is about that love that he has for us. I believe it is um, because he is slow to get angry, and he is filled with a faithfulness towards us, and he is um, moving among his people who can hear him right now. He is moving among his people who can hear him right now. And he was looking for people who would humble themselves and pray. And we've been praying all day. We've been praying all day. Doing our best to, to humble ourselves and to seek him. And I believe that this is part of his, his, his unfailing love and his unfailing faithfulness towards humanity. He wants everyone once and for all to know him. He wants everyone to know that the kingdom he puts inside us, the kingdom he puts inside us by the power of his spirit is unshakable. Because as we've seen, there have been earthquakes, there have been hur um, hurricanes, there have been fires, there have been riots, there have been shootings, there have been so many things going on in this world, shaking things up. The only answer to any of it is Jesus. And I believe in his love and his mercy and his goodness and his kindness and his faithfulness to all of humanity. 
He has people like myself and so many others doing their best, even if feeble at best, to point them to him. To bring a spiritual awakening, to bring a revival in the heart, to bring a revival in the mind, so people can come to know him. So I'm going to close this. Heavenly Father, you are so good. Um, before we close for the rest of the night um, here in a little bit, I just pray that you continue to lead and guide us. I just pray that your Holy Spirit is truly bringing a spiritual awakening wherever we are, whether it's in Clearwater, Florida, or here in Columbia City, Indiana, or it's in Texas, or it's in Australia, or it's in Africa, wherever we may find ourselves as we, we watch this today um, or in the future. I pray that um, uh, there has been a spiritual awakening, there's been a spiritual revival, and that you have um, provided a fresh outpouring of your spirit upon us, upon your people, and you're beginning to draw the lost, you're beginning to collect and go find like you promised you would, those who've been scattered in this time. Thank you, Amy, for believing with me. I so, so, so appreciate um, you letting me know that you're there. <laughs> um, so I'm going to close this right now for a moment. Uh, I might be on in just a little bit. Um, I do want to take a moment to, to just kind of praise and worship the Lord before we head out to, to the square. It's getting a little dark, but um, I pro God will provide the light because he is the light. So I'm going to hop off here for a little bit and just kind of get a better sense for how God really wants me to close this out over the next 35 minutes. And if you could be in prayer for me on that as well, that is sincerely appreciated. All right. I will talk with you in a little bit.